you're dealing with one more merciful than your mother, Wallah al -Azim. In Sahih Bukhari, Muslim, a woman among those who were captured after a battle. Sahaba were sitting after the battle. And they see a woman from those who were captured. She was running after every child looking for her son. She'd take every child, hug him, nurse him, then pass on and go to the next child. A moving scene, very moving scene that moved the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ. So the Prophet decided to make a lesson out of it for the Sahaba. And he said, he asked them, do you think that that mother would ever throw her son in hell? They said, no. Never. How? He said, Allah is more merciful with his servants than that mother is with her child. I was reading several days ago, Surah An-Nisa. In a meaning pop up to my mind that I had never thought of before. Allah commands in the Quran, the parents to take care of your children. يُصِيكُمُ Allah fi أَوْلَادِكُمْ When he talks about inheritance. Many people think the most merciful to them is their parents. Ya Allah, in this verse, is telling who you think is most merciful, your mom and your dad, take care of them. Ya Allah, Allah telling the ones you think are the most merciful to take care of you. See that mercy? It was dua, the dua of some of the righteous, Oh Allah, my mother is the most merciful to me. And she would never ever let me be in torment. And she would take me out of it. Oh Allah, you are more merciful to me than my mother, so protect me from the torment. Ya Arham ar -Rahmin. With me, a human, you make a mistake, and not even before you make a mistake, before one shot, and two shots, or three strikes, I abandon you. But with dealing with a ghafoor al-Rahim al afu you're dealing with different measures. Walillahi al-Mathal al-A'la. Never despair. Even the man who killed 99 people, one of the biggest sins after shirk, the authentic hadith in Sahih Muslim, and the authority of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, the man who killed 99 and went to an ignorant worshiper and he asked him, can you repent? And the, rep the worshiper said, 99? No way. So he finished them off. And that in itself is actually a lesson. If the doors of repentance were closed, it would cause chaos in this earth. Because what do you got to lose? Just go ahead and be full-blown evil. You got nothing to lose. Then he asked the alim, a knowledgeable person, he told him, I have killed 100%. A hundred people. Can I repent? He said, nothing can stop you from repentance. Get out of this evil land. Allah not only forgave him, but changed the universe for him. On his way to the new town, he shortened the universe for him, in honor for him, when the angels who take the good soul quarreled with the angels who take the evil souls. Allah changed the universe for a killer who killed 100 innocent souls and repented. Imagine what he'll do for me and you. When you feel despair, and you're going to despair in Allah, remember. Everyone as a kid knew the story of the people of the trench. The massacre they did. Ashab al-Ukhdud, the genocide. They annihilated people of La ilaha illallah. The righteous young boy who stood up to them. Massacre, genocide. Fatan al-Mu'mineen wal mu'minat What does Allah say? Inna al-ladhina fatan al-Mu'mineen wal mu'minat Thumma lam yatubu. Those who put the believers into trial, the believing men and women, didn't return into repentance. Look at that. And didn't return into, you know what it means? Had they repented from their crimes, Allah would have forgiven them. Because He said, ثُمَّ لَمْ يَتُوبُوا And they didn't repent. There's no sin, no, no sin too big and there's no sin too small. Repent and Allah forgives all. I'll read Ramadan, this is the season for it. Start right now. Regret the past, number one. Promise not to do it again. And say, Astaghfirullah, if it deals with other people's right, try to give it back to them directly. If not, indirectly. If it will stir up fitna, then make dua for them, or give charity in their name, or mention them, and then in good. Simple. You do that sincerely, and the Ghafoor al-Rahim, Yaqbal. Wallah is going to accept. Wahu alladhi Yaqbal. He promised. Wamin asdaqu min Allah qila. Not only will he accept, he will change them into deeds. Fa'ulaika yubaddil Allah sayyatam hasanat. Not only that, he will love you. Inna Allah yuhibbu tawabin. Get up my brother and sister and shake the dust of sins off your back. Spice up and decorate your tawbah more by making wudu into rak'ah. Declare your tawbah to him. Cry over your sins in agony over your sins. And start the path to Allah. Repentance is a shadow that should never depart you, ever. Repentance is condolence to those who are righteous. Ramadan is the seasons, is the prosperous season for all that. Don't get arrogant by any knowledge you have or any deeds that you ever did, no matter how much you have of it, 
Wallahi, we are all in the boat of sinning together. We're all in the same boat. In Sahih al-Bukhari, look at this beautiful, amazing hadith. A servant committed a sin and said, Oh Allah, forgive my sin. So Allah said, My servant committed a sin and he has known that he has a Lord that forgives his sin and punishes for his sin. I forgive him. Then he sinned again. Allah knows us. This time, Allah knows his servants. He is a يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقْ He knows we're going to do it again and again. We're going to sin more and more. He knows who he created in their nature because he created us. So then the hadith goes on and then he sinned again. He said, the man said, the sinner said, Oh Allah, forgive my sin. And Allah said, my servant has committed a sin. He knows that Allah, he has a Lord who forgives his sin and punishes for his sin. For the sin. Then he said again a third time. Look at that. Three times. Oh Lord, I sinned, forgive my sin. And Allah says, my servant has committed a sin and he knows that he has a Lord that punishes and, for, and that forgives the sin and punishes for his sin. Do what you wish, I have forgiven you. I'm not, I didn't say a mistake here. Do what you wish, for I have forgiven Allah tells him, do what you, did you hear? Do what you wish, I have forgiven you. Not meaning here you get a free ticket to Jannah. It means here you're forgiven as long as you sincerely repented as in the earlier part of the hadith and you continue to repent. There's so much hope, Wallah, in this hadith that sometimes we got to warn, hey, there's too much hope here. Don't get carried away with hope because that's a danger zone as well. But never, ever, ever repent while you're planning the next sin. That's fake. That's fraud with Allah. Make Allah happy. Yes, I said it right. Make Allah happy. Yeah, in Sahih Bukhari. Allah is happier with one who repents more than a man who's on a journey in a desert. He loses his food, water, and transportation in camel. So he sits there by the tree and waits death. Suddenly he looks up in the camels before his eyes with his water, food, and everything he needed. From awaiting death, to sudden relief out of the excitement he says oh Allah you're my slave and I'm your Lord Allah gives a scenario of how happy one is when life comes back to him Allah is happier than that when one repents make Allah happy make Allah happy my brother and my sister by not sleeping until you spill your heart out to Allah spill your heart to Allah not today but every day today will be the start do it today so if you die, you meet Allah on a clean slate. Doesn't one have shame that Allah descends to the heaven, closest to the earth every single night, in the one third end of the night, in a manner that best suits Allah. We don't know how. There's none like Him, the all hearing, the all seeing. He descends and asks at a time when nearly everyone is between sins and sleep. They're either watching that which is Allah, what Allah prohibited, or they're drinking in, in places that Allah prohibited, or they're in deep sleep. The majority of the world. Be among the few of the few who are crying and begging and pleading to Allah. In conclusion, uh, I said a few days ago, anyone who does a deed will see its effect in this life and in the akhirah. You get the bonus. The bonus is this life. But the main goal is the Akhirah. From the verse, Man amila salih, amin dhakirin awuntha. The opposite is true today. Pertaining to our talk today, Ibn Abi Mulaika said, when Asma radiallahu anha used to have a headache, she would grab her head and say, this is from a sin that I have committed in Allah, forgive Allah. The Quran is clear and decisive on it. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ uh, I apologize for going over the time, but this is a long topic and one of the most requested topics uh, that we got pertaining to the Ramadan talks. Uh, maybe, inshallah, there's much more that need to be, needs to be touched on in this uh, area. Allahumma anta rabbuna, la ilaha anta khalaqtuna, wa nahnu abiduk, wa nahnu ala ahdika wa wa'adika mustata'na, na'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'na, nabu'u bi ni'matika alayna, nabu'u bi dhunubina, faghfir lana, fa innahu la yaghfiru al-dhunuba illa ant, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, wa jazakum Allahu khayra.